Good morning, everybody. I want to talk about today filtration systems, and I'm not just talking about something to keep the virus out of your body. I'm, I'm going to use this in a metaphorical sense. You know, we've all been told to wear these little face masks, and some of them are like paper, but, you know, I chose to get this one. It has a kind of a filtration system on it. But I was thinking about how, you know, God's Word can kind of filter stuff through our lives. You know, throughout a day, we're not just bombarded by, like, just viruses. In this time, we're, we're oftentimes worried about a virus. But if you think about it spiritually, we're bombarded with a lot of different things that could potentially harm us. You know, we're often, whoops, my filter fell off. But I'll fix that later. We're often, let me just grab that real quick. We're often bombarded with all sorts of things we hear and all sorts of things that we're exposed to. And we've got to have a way to filter that stuff out. And sometimes, you know, one of those filters we can use is practicing what the Word of God says and building that into our lives. Because what one of these filters does is it has these things, this thing that holds the filter paper in and or the whatever material it is and it holds it in place so that it will keep whatever is bad from getting through that and so when we build the word of god daily into our lives we kind of do that very thing and i'm just gonna just gonna grab the scripture real quick and read through a passage that uh i think will give us some clarity as to what we allow to go into our mind or what we allow ourselves to listen to or think about, I think it's very important because we oftentimes are so careful with what we put in our bodies and what we eat, and we're worried about our health. And yes, it's good to be concerned about our physical health, but do we give enough thought and time to our spiritual health, what we allow to enter through our uh, thinking? Do we give enough time to our emotional health, how we allow ourselves to think and feel? I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about how we can build into our lives the Word of God and keep some of the negative stuff out. And I am going to turn to Philippians. It talks about this in Philippians 4, where it tells us what kind of things we are to think about. And it says, first off, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then he gives us a filtration system. Let's just call it that. He gives us one, this, uh, like, over, I would say it's, uh, let's count it. Uh, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, that's one. Whatever is noble, that's two. Whatever is right, that's three. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What you have, Whatever you have learned or received and heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So he's given us one, two, three four, five, uh, let's see, whatever is true, that's one, whatever is noble, two, whatever is right, three, whatever is pure, four, whatever is lovely, five, whatever is admirable, six, uh, excellent, seven, praiseworthy, eight. There is eight things that we can ask when we choose to think about something. Is it, is it true? Is it noble? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Or is it praiseworthy? If anything excellent, think about such things. And so we can, we can hear uh, when we turn on our TV or when we listen to what this person says or that person says, we can always take into consideration those eight criteria. Is it right? Is it true? Is it pure? You know, things like that. we got to ask ourselves those questions, and if it's not those things, we shouldn't give it much time or entertainment. Now, there's so many things going on in our world that are outside of our control, and what does fretting about them do for us? It just usually puts us in a bad mood and leaves us feeling negative for maybe hours on end. But, you know, first off, 
The first principle he talks about is rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And sometimes the best defense is a good offense, as the expression goes. And so what is our best offense? Our best offense is to focus on the Lord and to seek Him and to think about how wonderful and awesome our God is. When we keep our focus on how awesome God is, how wonderful He is, how pure and good He is to us, we can definitely build in our mind the right thinking. We see in Colossians 3, we'll turn to that real quick. It's a pretty good passage also. It talks about in Colossians 3, we'll turn to that real briefly. And it says, Ah, we'll start with verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. So, our first step is set our mind on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We're supposed to keep our focus on Christ. And there's a psalm that says, I have put the Lord before me. He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. So when we keep our gaze and our focus on Jesus Christ, that is truly where it belongs. That will keep other things from getting in and robbing us of our focus and destroying our emotional being. So then it says in Colossians 3 verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways of life in which you lived, but now you must get rid of get rid your you must also rid yourself of all such things anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the old self with its practices. So here in uh, Colossians, he's talking about putting on the new nature. We're not just taking off the old nature, those ugly habits and tendencies. We're replacing it with something even better. We're replacing it with a new life, with a new way of thinking, with a new way of living. And so it's not like you can just take off dirty clothes and then not wear anything. That would, that would be a problem too. I mean, you take off dirty, stinking clothes, you put on new ones. And sometimes we make the mistake, we just try to ignore the bad stuff, and we don't try to replace it with something good. And so it's like, it's like in Romans, it talks about, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. He doesn't just say, do not be overcome by evil, and then period. No, he says, but overcome evil with good. And so how can we really, really overcome negative and bad stuff in our lives? Well, we have to, by the power of Christ and the power of the Spirit, replace it with positive things. Think about it this way. Let's say you're tempted to complain and grumble and groan about this or that, or tempted to be dissatisfied with something that's going on. Well, now you could just try to stop doing that. That might not work too effectively unless you start to replace what you're doing by grumbling and complaining with actually doing something positive. Imagine what would happen if people just put off the ways of complaining, and they started saying, well, I'm going to use my words to be constructive and bless others. See, in that way, you're replacing the negative speech with positive speech. You're saying, I'm going to choose not to complain and grumble about people that I don't get along with well. I'm going to choose to actually use my tongue to bless and uplift others. And sometimes that's the best way to overcome a bad habit is to replace it with a good habit that is more constructive. It's like going on a diet or changing a lifestyle and trying to lose weight. You don't just say, well, I'm going to stop eating bad foods. Oftentimes, then you just feel like you can't do anything. But if you replace it with healthy foods that you enjoy just as much, that are better for you, then you've replaced the bad eating habits with the good eating habits. And usually in that, in that way, the change seems to last better. So, my encouragement is that we replace... We don't just take off the bad habits, but we try to replace them with good habits. We're called to be humble people, kind people, compassionate people, pure people, 
holy people, people who reflect Jesus Christ. So it's not just enough to try to stop doing the wrong things. We have to start reflecting the right things that Jesus Christ showed us to do. God bless.